So why was Britain so far behind America in opening its first national park? On a hidden blue plaque in the middle of the Timperley Triangle lies the answer, and today we're going to find it. But let's take the scenic route. Next up, the Peak District. The Peak District, to me, is the most important national park in the whole of Europe because of where it is. It's completely surrounded by large industrial cities like Sheffield, Manchester. The mass trespass has been described as the most important event of civil disobedience, if you like, in the history of this country. So this was quite an important event. It was a deliberate mass defiance of the laws. We're going to defy these trespass laws. We're going to do it. If the police turn up, we'll have to take the consequences. They put their bodies on the line. They themselves went, went on the hills, not in secret. They let everyone know what they were doing. And they basically said, stop us if you want to. I could not believe that five young men had been imprisoned just for walking on the moors. Certainly it resulted in what we've got now, which is the right to roam on mountain and moorland, but also for the creation of the national parks that we have. Welcome to the Timperley Triangle. This is Brooks Drive. I guess it was Brooks Driveway one time. So what is this mass trespass? Why would you end up in prison for walking on the moors? Come over and take a look at this. This ties into our story. Walkers and horse riders had been given until the 1st of January 2026 to apply to save unmapped rights of way through private land. People have been using paths like this since, well, since forever. But if it wasn't officially recorded by the deadline, it was going to be lost. These wonderful people have recorded this one. But through a lot of hard work, the deadline to register England's footpaths was cancelled after a public access campaign. But it just goes to show that your hard-earned rights can easily be taken away with the stroke of a pen. If the deadline hadn't gone away and this path wasn't registered, on the 1st of January 2026, you could have found a locked gate here. So, how did we win these rights of way and the right to roam? Buckle up, we're heading into the Timperley Triangle. There's a saying, you don't know what you got until you lose it. But just the same, you don't know what you got until you know how it was won. On April the 24th, 1932, four or 500 ramblers assembled here on the Hayfield Recreation Ground prior to making the mass trespass over Kinder Scout. To understand that trespass, I think you've got to know something about the background. In 1932, you couldn't just wander around the countryside or a national park, because all the land was privately owned, and national parks didn't exist. You've seen it before, in movies and on television. Wealthy landowners and their entourage going out on the moors, out on their land, to hunt birds or go fox hunting. I mean, most people worked in industrial occupations at that time, working class lads and lasses. Significant numbers of those would have been unemployed 
working class young people at the beginning of the 1930s. A lot of people, either the hills were something they saw when they finished work in their smoky factories in Stockport and Manchester, or they were the place they went to escape from, from the unemployment and the grim reality of the Manchester during the Great Depression. The fact that they could get out to the Peak District for a sixpenny tram ride fare and then walk in this beautiful open country was so important to them. And there's nobody on that countryside. Okay? It's kept for the pleasures of a very small number of people, small number of landowners. The feeling was that, well, hang on a second, if it was being used, we could perhaps understand that, but it wasn't. And what was being denied was the opportunity to go walking in that area. And the frustration they must have felt, uh, it, it must have been incredible. And people like Benny uh, wanted to do something about that. They thought that was wrong. Benny Rothman, who led the mass trespass in 1932, a fantastic little character, a man of great principle. So I was the secretary, and had been for two or three years, of the British Workers' Sports Federation in the north. And, uh, of course, I was involved right from the very start. Working-class lads like Benny could see this beautiful countryside, and yet to walk on it, they had to gain permission to walk on it. So they'll sit with the landowners and the landowners will go, OK, you're deserving, you can go. You're not deserving, you can't go. Uh, and that's really why the mass trespass took place, to open up these moors to everybody. Benny Rothman was born and spent his early life in Cheatham Hill, Manchester. But he spent most of his life in Timperley. It's about six miles from Manchester and it's now, as it was then, a cleaner, greener space than the city centre. Imagine the dirty old towns of the Depression. It would be a welcome diversion to go out in the fresh air and clear your mind and your lungs. But you couldn't. That would be trespassing on private property. And that private property was jealously guarded. So now try to imagine a world where there's no peak district. Well, not that it doesn't exist, but a world where it's not for you. You can't just go over there and spend an afternoon hiking and picnicking. Try to imagine the Great Depression. Everybody's out of work, you've grown up through the First World War, and now you live in a grimy black and white world. This was the world of a young Benny Rothman makes me wonder when these good old days were. I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way. I get all with pleasure the hard ball and way. I may be away. They said we're going to mobilise at a certain point and we're going to go and walk up on a spot which was illegal in essence. There was no permission given to do this in the Peak District. And they advertised the fact they were doing it. So there was a fairly strong police presence there. Uh, when they had their meeting at Bowden Bridge Quarry, just before they set out for the trespass, and Benny was pushed into place to, to give the address. So Benny, little lad, he stepped up to the plate and said, I'm gonna speak, I'm prepared to take me, I'm prepared to defy these laws because it's important. So led by Benny Rothman, uh, about 400 of them set out from Hayfield on April 24th, 1932, to deliberately trespass on Kinder Scout, which is the highest point of the Peak District. If there were enough of us, they couldn't turn us back. And they went up a path which had been uh, designated a right of way, but the only right of way to cross Kinder uh, about 35 years before. So they were on a right of way when they set out. So the police couldn't arrest them for that. So when they got onto the hills, they met the gamekeepers. Uh, and gamekeepers and uh, other hired helps lined up on the hills, the whistle blew and they left the footpath up onto the hills. Far more than the gamekeepers could stop, but they, but they didn't stop them trying and there were scuffles. 
minor injuries and a few arrests. But most of the trespassers were able to carry on. They got to the top and they met the contingent of Sheffield. And they had a bit of a victory meeting, then they all marched back their separate ways. The Hayfield, the Manchester Ramblers came back into Hayfield and six of them were arrested by the police and uh, subsequently um, sent for trial. Not incidentally on trespass charges, because there's no such thing, but for riotous assembly and public order offences and stuff like that. What made the campaign successful was not the direct action itself, it was the court case afterwards. It was when they stood up in court and proudly said, yes, we did it, yes, we'll do it again, and this is why we did it. Brave souls, the trespass was widely advertised in the newspapers. They knew what they were getting into. Benny was arrested and appeared in court defending himself. To start proceedings by advising the juries, whom I'm glad to see represent some of our most distinguished local landowners, not to be too concerned by the foreign sounding names of some of the defendants. We live in a free country where every man has his rights. Also, I understand that a copy of a work by a Mr. Lenin, isn't he the Russian gentleman, was found in the pocket of one of the defendants and that another was selling copies of the Daily Worker. This should also not be allowed to interfere in your deliberations. Now, Rothman, what have you to say for your opening statement? We, ramblers, after a hard week's work in smoky towns and cities, go out rambling for relaxation, a breath of fresh air. But we find when we go out that the finest rambling country is close to us just because certain individuals wish to shoot for about 10 days a year. Ramblers are forced to keep on footpaths where they exist and are denied the pleasure of rambling over moorland or climbing on the tops. The charges laid against myself and the other defendants here are an attempt to prevent ramblers from taking the mass action which will gain them access to mountains. The demonstration of April 24th was a peaceful demonstration to gain support for our contention of the right of access to mountains. This sort of thing must be stopped. There is no other country in the world in which people can express their opinions so freely. But they must stop at breaking the king's peace and making tumultuous scenes of this type. Rothman, you are sentenced to four months imprisonment. They didn't have any sort of formal defence. They defended themselves. Um, but it was a, a foregone conclusion that uh, they were sent down. The fact that they went to prison is the important thing for doing nothing at all, really, just walking on the moors. The publicity generated on that was the springboard. Social gains had to be made for the working class and the countryside. National Parks Act of 1949 was one of those gains. The mass yes, trespass was a tremendously yes, important occasion in the yes. struggle for access. But it, of course, is not the entire picture. There were numerous meetings and demonstrations held. There were petitions to Parliament, the lobbying of MPs. And, of course, there was the annual demonstration in the Winnetz Pass. The, the mass trespass took place in 1932. And uh, the, the Peak District National Park wasn't uh, designated and formed until 1951. And eventually, as we know, in 2000, we had the Countryside and Rights of Way Act, which gave us, at long last, what Benny and Tom Stevenson and all the others were, were working for was the right to roam, as we call it, on mountain and moorland. I've been over Snowdon, I've slept up on Croton, I've camped by the Wainstones as well. I've sunbathed on Kinder, been burned to a cinder, and many more things I can tell. My rucksack has often been below. 2022 was the 90th anniversary of the mass trespass. Of course, there was a reenactment, and there was also a movement to get the mass trespass taught in schools. Both my children are in high school now, and they're nearly finished. I asked them about it, and they'd never heard of it. Last goings off, my daughter was being taught about the Donner Party going across America. It's important to learn world history. 
But what an odd choice to teach that instead of something like the mass trespass. Well, we finally made it. Here we are in the middle of the Timperley Triangle at 86 Crofton Road. Benny Rothman and his family lived here for 58 years. It's thanks to Benny and people like him that we have the right to roam. The presenter in the old footage wasn't credited, but it certainly looks like Ewan McCall, and that would make sense. He also took part in the mass trespass, but at the time he was 17 and went by Jimmy Miller. You may know him as the writer of Dirty Old Town, the first time ever I saw your face, and of course, The Manchester Rambler, a song synonymous with the mass trespass. As I pointed out at the beginning, the fight for the right to roam isn't over. I'll leave you with the words of Benny Rothman. Freedom isn't a battle you fight once and win. It goes on forever. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler, from 